Welcome again, everyone. Uh, we will get started on our presentation shortly. Um, this is the Wheaton Conversations with Losang Sam Ten. And um, again, we will begin the presentation in just a couple minutes. We want to hear where you're listening from. So if you could put that in the chat, we'd love to know. Um, as I said, this is with, oops, excuse me, artist Lo Sang Semton, um, and specifically on Tibetan sand mandalas. Uh, Lo Sang has created one today, and at the end of the presentation, at the end of the Q&A, he is going to share uh, a live presentation of the one that he created today. While we're getting on to the presentation, you may want to consider joining us for October 29th with Alan Wexler and Virgil Marty at 6 p.m. I will be putting that registration in the chat so you can check that out a little later. I don't want to distract you from pre the presentation, but the chat will also be available after the presentation. Uh, as I said this, this evening, we're um, joined by artist Lo Sang Temten, Temten, excuse me, and his partner Su Kyung. They'll be chatting with us momentarily. Before we get started with that, I am going to share a few tech tips. My name is Marcy Peterson. I've been with Wheaton Arts for 26 years now, and I'll be handling the technical needs throughout the program. Uh, you may notice this presentation is through a Zoom webinar, and you will see the hosts and the presenters, but you will not see the other attendees. Uh, you can ask questions of the presenters by clicking the Q&A, and I want to make sure that you understand there is a difference between the chat and the Q&A. The Q&A is in the center at the bottom of your screen, and that is where um, Aveta Pergova, Pergova will be pulling the questions from, and I don't want you to miss that opportunity to ask questions. You can also like other attendees' questions in that box. Doing so helps the host identify the popular questions, and you just click the thumbs up if that's also your question. I'll be monitoring the chat throughout the program. So if you have technical questions um, or other questions outside about Wheaton Arts and things like that, then I'll be happy, I'll be there to answer those. You all also may have noticed that this session is being recorded. Only the panelists will be recorded and heard and recorded. Should you lose connection for any reason, I don't want you to panic, just close all your windows Go back to your original email, click on that, and you'll be brought right in, even if you have to change your device. Um, lastly, on the tech tips, to customize your experience, there are a couple things. First of all, over on the little thumbnail, you may see a few different settings there at the very top. You can try them out to see which ones work best for you. The one in the middle is the one I recommend, and that's the live speaker view. Um, also, you can access your settings in the upper left hand side of your screen and there's a small green icon. If you click on that green icon, you'll see several settings. For this particular instance, the only thing I think you may want to do is um, go to accessibility and maybe change the size of your chat. Otherwise, you should be good for this particular instance. A few more things to go over before we start the presentation. I turn it over to Avada. Um, if you'd like more information or discuss supporting Wheaton Arts, you can contact the Director of Development, Rhody Barron. Her email is here. I'll also put it in the chat. And I wanted to remind you that there are three types of support that you immediately you can support Wheaton Arts and webinars like this free red webinar that you're enjoying tonight. One is through membership. The other is through donations. And my all time favorite, of course, you may have heard is shopping at shopwheatenarts.org. 
Um, and I'm not going to read everything. I just want you to know that members really do get it all and the gift memberships are always available and you can shop online for that. And today that brings me to introducing Aveta today. Aveta Pirgova, PhD, is the director of the Department of Folklife and Cultural Studies at Wheaton Arts. Over the years, she has worked with more than 60 ethnic and regional communities in New Jersey, striving to preserve and share their cultural heritage. Aveta's primary interest is in cultural expression of ethnicity, ethnicity and identity, as well as the relativity of aesthetics and artistry. She's the member of ICOM, International Council of Museums, and is a current chair of Research Commission of IOV, International Folk Arts Organization, U.S. National Section. And I pass the introductions over to you now, Aveta. Thank you so much, and I'm so excited to be part of such a great presentation. Thank you very much, Marcy. You are such a gracious host. Uh, welcome everyone from me and thank you again for joining us. This evening I'm very happy to introduce to you an amazing artist and a deeply knowledgeable teacher in Buddhist philosophy and practice, Lasang Samten. Lasang Samten is a Tibetan sun mandala artist as a teacher of meditation as a spiritual director of the Tibetan Buddhist Center of Philadelphia. He lives and practices his art as part of a community of Buddhists, both Tibetan and others. He first studied sun mandala making while a monk at the monastery in 1975. In 1988, His Holiness the Dalai Lama selected Lausanne to create a mandala at the Museum of Natural History in New York. In 1995, Lausanne gave back his monastic vows and entered a lay practitioner's life. Since then, Lausanne has created mandalas in galleries, museums, schools, and other settings. Dedicated to the Dharma, he continues to travel extensively sharing his vast knowledge of Buddhist philosophy and meditation and his skill in the Tibetan ritual arts, including mandala. He received a National Endowment of the Arts Heritage Fellowship in 2002. And for those of you who don't know, that is the highest possible recognition a traditional artist can receive in this country, but also a PU Fellowship in 2004. He was a Philadelphia Folklore Project Artist in Residence in 2006-2007 and with Arts Artist in Residence in 2018. We are also <coughs> have another great artist tonight who will be joining Losang in the conversation about the Tibetan Sun Mandala, Su Kyung Kim. Su Kyung Kim received her musical training at the Juilliard School, where she earned her music degrees in viola performance. She has played professionally in Europe, Asia, and the US. Apart from music, Su Kyung has learned the art of sound painting from the Venerable Lama Losang Sang Ten. She assists and continues to learn the Asian art from Lama Lausanne and Ten by creating many sun mandalas throughout the US, Canada, and South America in places such as schools, museums, universities, and art galleries. Welcome to you both. Thank Lausanne. you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think that with these uh, introductions, uh, our audience is ready, and we uh, are all uh, anxious to, to, to hear from you, to share with us your thoughts about the Tibetan Mandala and its messages. Thank you, Evata. Thank you so much. Um, yes, uh, we, uh, me and Sujan, we both 
I'm delighted to be here this evening uh, with you. And uh, I have a chance to creating the Wheel of Life mandala at the, your extraordinary, beautiful gallery. And um, so, um, and today is, uh, today is a very, uh, you know, when we plan this, program uh, but we did a now looking today in the day very appropriate which is today is the full moon and full moon and normally in tibet and not only we creating our sand mandalas uh, well uh, in tibet they, they call it a particle mandala so the Zen mandala is more commonly we use in the West, in the United States. But however, very appropriate uh, today, the full moon, and we're having discussion of uh, particle mandala or Zen mandala. Along with that, yesterday and today and tomorrow, I'll be doing a mandala, one of the organization, actually national organization, there, uh, during our conference, and they would like to have a mandala for this conference. And so again, we'll be making that mandala here at the TVC, Tibetan Buddhist Center of Philadelphia. And today is the second day, so as uh, Marcy mentioned to you, so end of the, our conversation today, we were going to show you not only a picture, but it's a live mandala to you. It's very appropriate. Overall, is uh, thank you so much for uh, joining uh, tonight. And uh, so, uh, really, mandalas are. We're going to show the slides, but overall, the mandala. Let's say the next one, uh, Marcy. The next slide. Oh yeah. <clears throat> thank you. And again. Tibetan or Tibet. I would really like to you be each one, not only the words, not only hearing a broken English to your ear, hearing the my broken language, but I would like to you to be just a uh, in a way that visualize them. I'm sure some of you might have been to Tibet or some of you, many of you have been seeing the image or video and uh, Tibet and Tibetans. So, which I came from that country. Until 1959, it's uh, independent, rather World War knows or not, a uh, complete independent country. Then since, since 1959, today, and uh, unfortunately, Tibet is part of uh, mainland China. Very true. Sometimes our inner mandala become a little cloudy, uh, clouded, very fuzzy, very dusty, very chaos. But overall, it's underneath the chaos. There's some mandala for each one of us. So sometimes we're hearing, special these days, we say, oh, care. In a way, it's true, but the chaos are icing as a, like a cloud. Sooner or later, if we walk together as a mandala, sooner or later, this cloudy, dusty chaos, it, it disappears from you. Disappear from the humanity. 
So really the mandala Buddha taught as a beauty is all each, look at it, each grain of sand of caring or the beauty of the whole design. Each, if there's no each of grain of sand, there's no such as a, we can see a physical mandala. So we each one represents a grain of sand, creating a mandala within us. Masi, could you show us the next slide, please? Oh, yeah. There are numerous mandalas, right? There are so many different kinds of mandalas. There are overall mandalas are, with this kind of mandala, we preserve in, since Buddhism came to Tibet, we Tibetans, the preserve in Tibet, but originally, this all came from India, my second home, India. You know, you know that India, a very spiritual country. Again, chaos, lots of corruptions. Well, corruptions are everywhere, but corruptions. And, but it's a very, very high spiritual. Indians, spiritually, Indians are Tibetan's guru, a teacher. After seventh century, we Tibetan become a Buddhist in a sense, because of Indians, Siddhartha, he was an Indian. So, so the mandala, as like a, as like a trick, another way to look at it is the mandalas are how to tame the mind. Taming the mind, mind itself is so complicated. Look at your mind. You really look, look at your mind. It is so complicated. It is a complicated subject. Yes. Does not have a shape or color, but so powerful. But so the taming the mind, and therefore there are so many different kinds of mind. For example, what we're seeing right now, the design here, each one means something. Not the artist can create whatever he or she like to create. And this each one has a meaning. Sometimes I call up mandalas, which I'm doing since 1988, like a grandma, our grand grandparents recipe, creating the, that soup on the, di on the meal. Has a special taste much more so than a, me as a creating a, a meal, as a, you know, chin up, they call it, blessings, blessings. The grandparents' blessings in it. Next one, my see. Oh, yes. When you sing mandala, that picture is a Kala Chakra mandala. This is a really the picture. I'm glad you were showing this. This design, the picture, is a first color, first sand mandala, let's say, or particle mandala uh, in the United States, 1988. American Museum of Natural History. 50,000 people came, physically 50,000 people came to see this mandala in American Museum of Natural History. This mandala cover Time Magazine, New York Times, all the major papers. 
And then second mandala which I did was in Philadelphia, city of bloody love or sisterly love too. So that's because of that mandala, the second mandala, I have a chance to mandala to create here in, in lovely city. So since then, Philadelphia has become my home. I'm Philly boy. Yes. And now that <clears throat> my right hand side, the mandala, this is the design, similar design, which we, Su Yang, we're going to show to you and our program. It's called the Mandala of Compassion. Who does not like our compassion? We all need the compassion. Who does not like compassion? Who does not like the love? Yes. If we receive the love and compassion, our stress one way. Even the, just the name, even just the name, we didn't have to go the detail of the meaning of anything. <clears throat> meaning of anything, just, just the name. I remember some of the busy uh, 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 gallery of the museums and people did not know what I'm doing. <coughs> me. And then somehow they, they see a information, compassion, people, even though he or her is so busy catching up the next program, they, they like to see this. Why? Because of name. And uh, here I see in the title, five Vienna Buddhas. So reason is, there's the middle one design and then five designs of in, inside the circle. These are the five, called the five Vienna Buddhas. Well, five Vienna Buddha means uh, using that words is really like a very exotic sort of like a words, which means Again, you or me, which we call the name. My name is Lobsang, and Marcy, and Su Chang, and all these names where we're going to label the name of the five things we're living with. Form, feeling, perception, formation, consciousness. That's what there's five. Right? Form, feeling, perception, formation, consciousness. Long as these are healthy, we say I'm healthy. I didn't have to go see the doctor. I'm healthy. Long as these five are not not that you know healthy, and then we we'll look the who's who who's who we, and the doctor and nurses and, and all this are, yeah. So that's called five Diana Buddhas. Again, not necessarily we're calling the, our form, feeling, perception, formation, consciousness are a Buddha or anything. We're saying that these five which we have now have a seeds become a Buddha. So that's why five Diana Buddha. And I'll back to the again, sorry to back to this. I love this mandala of Kala Chakra. Very appropriate today, what's going on in the world. If you look careful, even so many details, but it, it'll, you will look in the inside the circle. There's a five 
five colors. Special, you know, there's a black, there's a red, there's a yellow, there's a white. Do you know why? Skin, skin color of the humanity. Some of black, some of red, some of yellow, some of white. Due to the environment, temperature. But yet we all in the one mandala. We all are one mandala. We all in one mandala and we all are equal. Look at it, really, I'm not making a story. I'm not making up my own idea. So the, whatever the black, the area, the same size in the red and yellow and white. It shows about equality. Not knowing the equality of our humanity, we fought a lot. We're still fighting. So therefore, over 30 years, I'm doing this, and Su Jiang Chu will be doing this as we're reading earlier our resume. Here in the United States, in Canada, and many places, it's just promoting the peace. That's why in 1988, His Holiness Dalai Lama said, yes, you should go and do it. You know why? This is a peace. He didn't send me to here or New York to promote the Buddhism. Not at all. Buddhism is a personal choice. No one forced Buddha, even since Buddha said, and Buddha said and all the masters, you cannot promote you what you believe. Your choice. Well, Sometimes we're reading the books about Tibet. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> yes, majority of Tibet before are more Buddhist. That is true. But no one, no one says you have to be a Buddhist. And plus, there's no other choice. There's no Judaism. There's no, uh, in non, you know, 10th century, I think 14th century, some of the missionary came from, from Europe to Tibet, and some of them become a Buddhist. So there's no, uh, this Islamic community came from India, especially from Kashmir, came to central Tibet and Lhasa. It's a beautiful city. A really very peace, peaceful city. Oh, I will tell you one thing, because it is important. In a way, it's a part of Mandala. 17th century, some of the missionary came to central Tibet in Tibet. Well, seven Dalai Lama was alive. And those missionaries, three of missionaries, they asked to the Dalai Lama, can I like to build a church in the city? And Dalam said, of course. And he gave up one of the best land in Lhasa city. And they lived it a few years. But unfortunately, uh, climate or high altitude, they could not really difficult to live to bad. And they went back to Europe. And still at that time, the seventh Dalai Lama was alive. And Dalai Lama said, yes, I will take care of your church. And, you know, long story short, they could not come back. And then, I mean, you know, sort of nobody there. And what they did was uh, the church bell, the bell, they put in the one of the holiest Buddhist temple, they put that bell on the top of it, 
still people you if you you we American you American if I'm American too I cannot go to Tibet anymore. If you have a chance to go to Lhasa, and you call the Chokang, the main old Tibet, and the most important Buddhist chapel, there is uh, still that bell is hanging there. Okay, I'm talking too much here. In a way, I'm talking is a mandala. I'm talking about the meaning of the mandala. How important we as all humanity to how to live together peacefully. So that's the real the whole meaning of the mandala. May I see next slides, please. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. Here, here, I'll be sh uh, short. So one is a mandala for medicine, and my. Uh, left hand side is a mandala of medicine. And in the, uh, my right hand side, this is called the mandala of Amitabha. Well, this mandala, Amitabha mandala, Buddhists uh, believe the rebirth. The die and then, you know, even the consciousness is somehow like a new form in the next slide. So therefore, this mandala have a lot of meaning. All the death process, how we as an individual, as a human, what happens? What happens? Yes. Like a map. And then, for, for, before finding the Next parents, what will what what going to happen? So that explains in Mandala Amitabha. Next, please, Marcy. Oh, okay. Now this is a good timing here uh, again. Sujang, uh, uh, Sujang. <laughs> so the question. Yes. Is how does mandala help us re revise our views of the world and of ourselves? That's right. Thank <laughs> you for me. Thank, thank you for question. In a way, I think I cover the meaning of what, uh, what it says here, world and ourselves. I believe <laughs> I cover. Yes. Yeah. When we close our eyes and we think about it. When we read the history, history of this country, history of the world, and we really, how many millions and millions and millions and millions of people, even though eventually, I mean, we all going to die, rather we wear the mask, rather we, uh, whatever it is, but no one can live forever. Right? But sometimes, but in here they're talking about, here the mandala talking about the men, men creating uh, the death. Right? Yes. So, so many millions of people lost their life due to our hum human behavior, our physical, mental activity. So, so many people lost during the war, illnesses, and on and on and on. So therefore, mandala, Meditation of the mandala, or observing that energy into us, very important. Very important. Yes, because we, we need to, <clears throat> um, 
Earlier, I'm talking about the mind. It's so wild, isn't it? Beautiful, yet, but so wild. Our thoughts are, what do they call it? On the ocean, they, no. Yeah, like a waves, that's a good point. So yeah, thanks, but like a waves. Like a waves. The thoughts of, you know, really are like a wave. One under the next, right? What are you thinking? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> what do you think? Are you thinking mandala or something else? <laughs> Next one, please. Oh, all right. So here, Mars is showing us mandala will of life. Will of life. Will of life. I, I'm having tea. I don't know what are you having. I'm having tea. In the monastery, we serve tea. I remember one of my uh, dance teacher. When I was young, I was the dance master. I become dance master because I learned that dance from my master. So my dance master, I remember, somebody said to him, oh, Gala means teacher, Gala. I think you're drinking too much tea. And he said, what else, I should, what else I have to drink? I cannot drink the wine. What else? <laughs> yeah, that's the story to you. We need to enjoy. we definitely <clears throat> enjoy the life. Enjoy the life means uh, we should not do something hurting us, right? Healthily enjoy the life. Enjoy the company. Enjoy the people who you love, love more. Love has a no uh, limited. Love more. Love more to you, yourself, and love more to the other. So, again, this is called the will of love. In Tibetan, they call it Siva Kolo. Siva Kolo, <clears throat> there are, Siva Kolo has a lot of, see, when you Looking in here, five, four photos, all of Sipakolo. Sipakolo, the mandala, artists have a lot of choice. Well, the story is the same thing, but you can draw a little bit of each time, you can draw a little bit of your own idea of it. Right? By the way, I will tell you. Sip, I've been doing a mandala which are how many years I said to in the United States? 30 years. That's a lot. So beginning I'm doing a mandala of such as like a will of time. And people come to see the mandala and I said, will of time. So said, what is that? And need to be quite a bit of explanation of the of time. So then I was wondering, my monkey mind is wondering, what is the best 
to, to show the design to the general public, especially in the schools. So I thought the wheel of life would be the best because there's a lots of design. There's, uh, we, we, in the wheel of life, we as a human being part of the wheel of life. And this, until 98, never done by the sand. And this is sort of like a Lobsang's idea, done by sand, you know where? Reno, Nevada, an art museum, where at the time Su Yang was in, uh, working at the university there. And that's what we met. So 98. So, <clears throat> so next one, uh, uh, next one, thank you. Yeah, next one, sorry. Uh, okay, so here, the wheel of life, if you go probably next slide to the middle of the, middle of the design, there are three animals. That's what you're reading too, three animals. Marcy, could you close up the next slides, please, maybe? Oh yeah, there, right. <laughs> here, here the pig looks like a pig. Sometimes I draw a pig and people say, what is that? I say, I understand. I need to put the sign there said, this definitely is a pig. People understand right away snake, but what is that animal? <laughs> okay, and here the pig, rooster, well here, you know, pigeon and the snake. You know what? You know, meaning of this. Here, I'm sure many of you uh, know, know well. And here, special, some of the TBC, Tibetan Buddhism Center member, they explain much more, much more clear, beautifully than me. But so these three are, not the animal, these three are the represents things, as, things make, making us a crazy. All the causes, the suffering comes from these three represents. Pig represents the ignorance, Think about this, ignorance, the ignorance. <laughs> ignorance. And pigeon represents a greed. Are we so greedy now? Are really, are we so greedy now? We humanity came to the top of the greedy and destroying everything. And then the next animal, the snake, represents our anger and the hatred. Who said these three animals represent uh, these three things? Buddha. So therefore, 2,600 years ago, Buddha knew all humanity destroyed by what? These three emotions, ignorance, greed or attachment, the anger or the hate. It is destroyed. It is destroyed. Due to these three, still we have to wear the mask. <clears throat> one, one symbol is that. It really is. So that's the, <clears throat> that is the main message of will of life. Oh, 
Okay, next, next slide, Marcy. Okay, so there again, and then now the second rink, I'm talking about here three animals, and there's a white and the dark and uh, uh, white and the dark, did I say right? So these are the represents uh, good and uh, evil. Next one. Okay, there you go. Yes. In Tibet, we have lots of monks and nuns. So there we go in the white area, the monks are very walking meditation, moral disciplines. Right? And so here, that's what I'm saying. Artists can create your, your own imagination. So that I, I do here Christmas tree. Christmas, mm, Christmas tree. Christmas coming so fast. <laughs> Sometimes we need to, which we can say to the day and week and a month, slow down a little bit. <laughs> so there's Christmas tree and there's, uh, you know, uh, caring, loving. General speaking. Man need the woman, woman need the man, love each other. Or of course, man to man, woman to woman, the love, basically the love. Yeah, the love. All the great masters, San Francisco Sisi, all this great master, the love, original love is loving, you know, we couple love each other, that's the source. That increasing more and more and more and, and then love to everyone. Okay, next one, Marcy. Oh, okay. So here briefly, so now the second, Third ring is, uh, yeah, so you know, what this looks like, we're talking about here, this is uh, heaven, heaven. Human. human, realm, animal, uh -huh. yeah, hell realm, hell realm. ghost, demigod. Uh, demigod, that's right, yeah. you're right, so here, this design, I draw uh, this one, I don't know where, I've been doing this design so many places, but I don't know where, but church. yeah, in the something I draw the church. Okay. Yes, I put here the cross. Yes. And in this area, and there's a tree, can you see the big tree, one of the corner? Heaven and the demigods, tree. The tree, beautiful tree, grows from demigods. And all the fruits landed into the heaven, which represents rich and poor. I was amazed when I come to the United States in New York, I would say, so, oh, because so I grew up in India and the rice and lentil is the main food. Rice and lentil. We nickname to those two uh, gold and silver. Silver is the rice, gold is the lentil. One in the Manasu, we say, what's the, what's the lunch today? Oh, Gold and silver. So what I'm saying is, now it's a little different. But back then, the best rice in India, you will not can buy on the Indian market. You can buy in here.
you know. So that's that represents growth in a certain place, especially in third world country, but all the goodness go to the rich place. That's the conflict about the war. Overall, is each design means something. If you're looking at the, <clears throat> I'm not sure we have a close-up or not, but the human area, the section of the human. You can draw a lot of designs there. You can spend a lot, you can add a lot of things there. You can add the chocolate, cheesecakes, anything you like, cookies or, you know, you know anything. But most important, you have to show there about the birth to the death. So here, on the right in the moment, the birth and then the death. That's the important. How are you going to design that up to the artist? Okay, sorry, I'm <clears throat> time is running. So next please. Um, oh yes, that also same thing, yeah. Okay, that I can see here is a design, it's a hell run. And the hell run, especially they draw the hell run in there Sun and moon. Would you like that? Sun and moon. What does sun and moon does for us? Brings the light. Even the night, like a today, the full moon, even though we forgot, look, well, here is different, but you will, when we're living in, the, living in the very remote place, place I grew up in Damsala, at that time very remote, and there's no street lights. But if that day is a, that evening is a full moon, that full moon shines, you didn't have to need the light to carry. Yeah, sometimes, that's that mean. I mean, as a Buddhist point of view, not necessarily hell rum is something, hell rum something somewhere else, but sometimes we live as a hell. Some weeks and months and sometimes years, we live as a hell. But, so the hell realm, they draw sun and moon. They say, sooner or later, the brightness, the sun and moon shine to the earth. Regional design put the door this way, willow life does have also the sun and moon. Sun and moon, just symbolic, symbolism. So real sun and moon is aware within us. Not out there, not somewhere else in here. Right? All these designs so overall is talking about inside of us. We have a choices. We live with the choices. Politically, economically, our individual, we have a choices. I must say here, we have a choices what kind of president we need in the future in after you know November 11, November 3, November 3rd. We have a choice. So we live with the choices. Choice. Yes. I uh, have been <clears throat> me and Su Kyang, and I've been going to lots of meeting with the inmates. Really. And unfortunately, uh, <clears throat> some of those are their friends, and they have a wrong choice at the right. But, you know, at that moment, wrong choices, unfortunately. But when we become a, when we lost our inner mandala, we're drunk. When we're drunk, we does a lot of funny things. We really does funny things. Not funny, but it's terrible. 
Arab wrong choice. So therefore, overall, the mandala talks about we have a choice, choice to make, choice to make. What we're going through in our head, we have a choices to make. Yes, overall, it's if we choose, if we do the right, right path, oh, someday, soon, all these clouds are no longer with us. We can shine the mandala within. Next one, uh, Marcy, thank you. Okay, so now, oh yeah, there's a design now. I can see a little close up, the middle of the design, there's a bird to the death. Youth and marriage and old age and sick and die. Why there's a death because of birth? Very scientific. Why there is a why the why is old age because of birth? Why there is a sick because the body and the mind again the birth? Is that true? And then plus in the Buddhist point of view, why there is a death because of birth? Why is the birth because of death? If there's no death, there will not be a birth. Therefore, whole idea of Buddhist, Buddhist, as a Buddhist, meditation aiming for what? Not reborn again, no birth. It's called the Nirvana. I see sometimes as a perfume, they call it samsara, nirvana, or something like that. But the real nirvana is no longer as good. Next one, Marcy. Oh, okay. So now here a uh, little detail, so I'm not sure due to this, our timing, your time is precious. You each one, I don't know how many people are with us, but your time is precious. I don't want to waste a lot of your time. So next slide, please. Okay, so there's uh, now the ending of the, uh, uh, well, again, the will of life. Next one. All right, so this one in this uh, will of life, the last circle of the will of life, they call it 12 design. It's called a 12, in Tibetan they call it Tende Yala Chungi. Tende means a, Tende means interdependent, Chungi means a 12. Okay. Right. So we're talking about the birth earlier. So how one individual like me as a love son, what is a, how, how does a rebirth does? How did rebirth, rebirth, how does it rebirth? So that design is talking in here. That meaning is talking with the design. Did I say before ignorance? Look in the first slide, the top of the slides, there's a house, has a two, two beautiful windows and the door. And the weather look, doesn't look like a good weather and the clouds are very dark clouds. This person, the man, supposed going to the home. That's his idea. 
He think he is going to fall. But yet, look, the person is going opposite. Going opposite. Opposite from the hole. But yet he thinks he is going to fall. Why? Because the weather is not good. And he's old. And he's blind. He has a cane and walking. But if he walk that direction, he will never be a whole. That represents the ignorance. You got it? Very meaningful design. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> I love to show you the design or uh, life design. Uh, uh, so, and I'll, I'm sure you might have uh, some questions. So each this design, 12 designs, which means uh, how to rebirth from the one life to the next life. So that's that. And if you're interested, you can read is a book. Read is called 12 Dependent Origination. Did I say right? 12 dependent origination. If you read that, or if you, and then that gives you the meaning of the 12 design which we're seeing here. And each design, I put a dog. That's not really a tradition. Buddha didn't say uh, you have to draw the dog with a man or the woman. But I love, I love dog. I love pets. Yes. So that's why I draw the dog. Here, one dog, the dog I draw here looks like a, like a, a female dog in Jamshala, her name Tara. This dog looks like a Tara to me. <laughs> I miss her. <laughs> okay, next one, Marcy. Oh yeah, there's a dog there too. Okay, good. All right, next one. All right, so that's a pretty much uh, end of the, I'm not sure. So still in the will of life. If again, a will of life, you can tap in the will of life. There are so many meanings gives you about this design. Next one, uh, Marcy. Okay, I think that's the last slide, right? Oh, oh yeah, okay. Now, if you have any questions, one or two, if not, then Sujang, we're going to show you the live mandala to you. Well, we have uh, several questions. Uh, uh, I just wanted to, to thank you for this talk and um, uh, let me give you these questions. Um, Donna Grace uh, wanted to know how big are the mandalas? Oh, <clears throat> our, our, the question is the mandala for this mandala or general mandala? Well, oh, okay, that's okay. So the mandala, mandala is, uh, one thing is that depend on, on which mandala is. For example, the Kala Chakra mandala you saw before, that the largest we did in New York was 10 feet. 10 feet at the RBM gallery. But that was a, my, I did a largest mandala in my life. Normally the mandalas in the monastery we do about, uh, about six feet mandala. Six, that's not really the normal size. Thank you, yes, next one. Well, the next one um, in Super Santa says, hello, Lama Lusang. I noticed there is not the color purple in the mandalas. So the question is, is there a significance in the choice of colors? No, like a wheel of light mandala, you can put any color you want. To. But the mandala of, the, again, we're showing so far, we show the mandala of compassion and the mandala of wheel of time. There are purples but it's not really the cover the major space, right? But there are purple colors in the mandala. Color chakra mandala, the creating a color chakra mandala, I need a, almost 30 different colors, not just one color. 
30 degree color. That's the red, many red, bright red, and many shades of the red. But there are, yes, and next one. Thank you. Well, the next one uh, is, uh, is the dye used in making the wheels, uh, make them uh, made from organic materials? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. One time I was doing a mandala, Sujana, we were doing a mandala at the Harvard a definitely school, definitely a school in Harvard. And one lovely couple came to, uh, to meet us and he said to me, they both said, something next month or something, their wedding. And he said, Lama Lobsang, could you design, could you come and create our wedding cake? <laughs> I said, that I really don't know. But the answer to your question is, uh, here the sand which you're seeing are uh, most of color. But Tibet, back then Tibet, there's no art store to you can buy the color. Whole environment. So many color rocks you can find in the nature and throughout it. The best material, you know, in a way, material is not that important. But the material case, if you're talking about the quality of the material, they have been created the mandala on different precious gems, corals, turquoise, gold, and silver. Especially the 3D mandalas, for obtained in Tibet, made of pure, pure gold, pure silver. Mm -hmm. People do believe uh, if you create something image, holy image and more valuable uh, 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 material, you will accumulate the merit or purify yourself. That sort of idea we have. This is not the Buddha's idea. Buddha's, Buddha taught about the simplicity. Buddha never said you have to create the mandala by gold or anything. He never said that. Buddha said, create the mandala in you, not out there. Buddha said, and no need to create the churches and temple out there, but create in within you. Okay, I think that's Thank you. Yes. Uh, about the next question, um, Linda says, curious about the second layer. Is good and evil, uh, light and darkness, always portrayed as equal forces to manage in our lives or are they portrayed that way specifically in this mandala? Well, <clears throat> Wheel of Light mandala, that the second, second uh, circle perfectly divide into two. One is a dark, one is a white. Well, yes, the, 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 her question is whether they are equal forces. Yes. Overall, is idea is idea, the meaning of the mandala, idea and the hope and dream is all that they were white. Eventually, the white covered to the, all the darkness removed. That's the whole idea. That's the dream. That's the hope. That's the hope. And we can do it though, not the hope, but we can do it. Right. Example, example, I would say one example. When you very stressful, that's the darkness. Mm -hmm. So then minute we stress, stress, stress is a mind thing. You know? And when we're singing, that's the light. Exactly. And then we need to reminding ourselves, okay, I'm stressful. So I need to release my stress. Thank and you. That way, that stressful. It's a magic. Okay. Yes, this Mine is can do a lot of magic things. Mine is a greatest artist. You will see, we're seeing the design and we'll show the design. There's nothing. Man can create the beauty 
could, there's no word to describe. Okay, the next, are we sure? Yeah. Yes, there are a few more questions. Um, the next one is, uh, what did you say was the real Nirvana? Hmm? What did you say was the real Nirvana? Real Nirvana means there's no suffering. No suffering. No suffering. No headache. <laughs> no, no darkness. No darkness. No stress. Even though you live in the, whatever you're living, either in New Jersey or Pennsylvania or India or wherever you're living, but there's no suffering. <coughs> yeah. Well, the, the next question is a bit more practical. Okay. Uh, it um, asks, how do you dye the sand? <clears throat> Good question. And the, first of all, the color, color should be a watercolor. Has to have a watercolor. Because the reason is, the sand mandala or after that dismantle and put them back to the river. So therefore, you know, sort of not polluted to the water. But watercolor, uh, either powder, powder water, watercolor or watercolor liquid, and depend on how much, how 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 the light and the dark color you want, and add it that, and add it the water. Excuse me, and mix it, and and that depends on the temperature, and they were too dry, and then that's all. <laughs> and and there's a beauty. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Like well, this. there's um, uh, there is one comment and um, a couple of more questions. Okay. What is that? Um, my three-year-old son Wesley is watching with me, and wants me to let you know he says hi. I know okay. it is silly, but would you be able to say hello to him? Hello. <laughs> Wesley is watching. Yes, Wesley, Wesley is watching. I'm saying to hello to you, bottom of my heart. <laughs> and we all, how old you are now? Three years old. Yeah, truly, we pray. We pray there are, they're the one who really makes a differences in this planet. Uh, and it's, um... In the future of our, these are our seeds. These are our seeds. So I remember, and I, I was, I was uh, <clears throat> quite a number of years of Dalai Lama's attendant, which means I was very close every day. He especially pay attention to the kids. He said, you the kids, we are, we have so much hope. We messed up. <laughs> yeah, we did it that. We did. You're the people. You're the kid. Yes. <laughs> so thank you for saying to hello to us or me. And I said to you before, I'm really to saying and hello, more than a hello to you from part of my heart. Thank you. Well, Sam, there are um, some wonderful words that people are sharing with us in the chat. Yeah. Uh, and um, Marcy is going to, to share the chat with you later on so okay. that you can see them. Uh, but um, I have a, uh, uh, three more questions, actually. One uh, is uh, in the, the Q&I box. Uh, uh, can your mandala help someone else or must one make one's own? I didn't get. Excuse me. I didn't get the question. Well, I'm sorry. What? Uh, if you create a mandala, hmm. can your mandala help someone else, or do they have to make their own? This is the question. Uh, 
are you saying the mandala is uh, am I creating the mandala or mandala was created in the already in the past? Uh, if you are creating from mandala, could it be for someone? Oh uh, yes, of course, yes. So the mandalas normally the mandalas are creating the mandala for someone, which means that during the teaching and creating the mandala by fully involved with the teacher and creating for some someone someone either one person or more other people. Yes. I see. Yeah. Uh, and um, I received. Uh, two uh, questions in the, in, the, in the chat in the private to me but because we have a couple of more minutes I'll, I'll ask them there are two questions mm -hmm. one of them are there a special occasions for which mandala is created yes i would say yes then i mean which one so you can well is uh, depend on the what what month what ceremony and depend on the you know uh depend on the teaching for example, the Kala Chakra Mandala, they have been creating the mandala during the Kala Chakra Empowerment. And also the Kala Chakra Mandala have been creating uh, the month of where, when, where, month of who the taught the Kala Chakra teaching. Mm -hmm. so, so they are, uh, uh, they look at the calendars. And then the Wheel of Life? Will of life, the same thing, the will of life, also for a uh, whole idea for the mandala and bring our community together. Will of life, special though. In back then, Tibet, okay, back then, Tibet, well, at that time, I'm talking about, you know, like a nine, before 1959, right? There's no TV, there's nothing else there. Of course, there's no, no TV at that time. I, I don't think so in the world, there's TV. So, and the entertaining is uh, the will of life. One of the storytelling, storytellers is uh, one of the entertaining in Tibet. So then the winter time, winter time, the, the, uh, not the Sen Mandala will of time, will of life, will of life painting hung in the wall and then storyteller, he, he has a special hat. And all, especially winter, everybody have a time because of, you know, there's no, not much to do in the outside. You cannot build the homes because of earth is a breeze. So it's a cold. And so all come to the uh, courtyard and bring the lunch and the tea and and then the and then the storyteller that tell the stories, not the storyteller that tell the story like how I'm telling you the story now, with the melody. Oh, yeah, he will oh, be singing it. Oh, it's a beautiful like like this. I remember one thing like, it's each one began by a mantra of compassion. And then go on and on. And then it just, and then come to the, a lot of time, everybody cries. I mean, really, everybody cries. You know, I mean, just, and then during the stories, everybody laugh. Ah! I understand. It, it is a, that country once upon a time. That country was a heaven. Now, hell. But yeah. at that time, Tula, I remember. I was born in 1953. I do remember. I lived it there until the age of five. I do remember the winters. I was sitting next to the, my mom. I think she is crying <laughs> with a group. I think she's laughing with the group. Yeah, and now, and now, and now, huh? Now you are telling us the story. I know. And then <laughs> this is not the one day functioning. This is not the one hour function, whole day and last a week. And then they moved to another town and they all follow him. 
it is a fascinating it's like a shangri-la it is a it was a shangri-la one time yes and 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 the tibetan said oh welcome when the chinese came 1949 from china to occupy a country beginning tibetan said welcome come come let listen to the story listen to the story here's the room here's the horse here's the mule and then 1959, he said, this is- Yeah, things changed. This is part of our- Things changed. This is not belongs to you. This is belong to us. Mm. That happened. Yeah, so, I understand. Okay. So yeah. I, I want to ask you the last question uh, at this time, which is- um, question, And then we'll show you to- Let's and we, to, yes, to, uh, we'll yeah. go to see the, the yes. yes. The last question is um, about the three animals uh, in the center of the wheel of life mm -hmm. that represent ignorance, anger, and greed. So the question is, because when you were talking, you said that uh, greed and attachment, greed or attachment, yes. that is why uh, the person is asking how are greed and attachment related? Um, I guess because when you think of attachment, uh, we think of well, we attach to our parents, we attach to our children because we love them. How is this compared to greed? How this could be the same? <laughs> in, in a way, all the negative emotion, uh, at, you know, uh, all are connected. Ignorance is a connect to the attachment. Anchor is connect to the greed. Greed is connect to the attachment. Or all this connected to each other. There's no one single identity emotion separate. All are connected. So therefore, more so connected greed and attachment. Greedy. Very true. When we say I love you. But down, deep down, is a greedy. It's greedy. <laughs> it's uh, it's very interesting. I I hope uh, they understand what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's... So now uh, I will show you the you already seeing or not. But uh, Mars is going to help us to show for them. Yes, to, uh, we are yeah, safe. She will. She will. Okay. Uh, so that okay. people can see it up close. She will. Close up. So now here we're going to... Yes, all that beautiful detail. And you were wondering, Rosa, how many people joined us today? There were over a hundred people. And um, I noticed in, in the chat when people were sharing from New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York, but also Wisconsin, Washington State, and Canada. So your story today was shared by people from all over. And perhaps this is the beauty of this um, virtual meetings that we can have people joining us from Canada, which wouldn't be driving to us otherwise. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. okay, so now we're going right, to show so you. So we're going to stop the audio, okay? And move on over. Wonderful. And we're seeing the picture is great. It is just amazing that this is all sand and I love that it goes back to nature. Yeah, and they just finished it today, this mandala. Okay, now we are here the next to the mandala, live mandala, which, which uh, uh, we will be creating this uh, yesterday and today is the second day, the mandala of compassion, mandala of compassion. So the mandala of compassion, always the middle of the design, if you can see that, so yeah. So there's a lotus flower, and that makes this mandala is mandala of compassion. And, uh, and we talked about earlier the five Dhyana Buddhas. 
or five hips or five uh, aggregates, form, feeling, perception, formation, consciousness, which are the, these five designs that represent. Then the outer ring, if so young can do a outer ring, make sure that uh, not touch to the table, but the outer ring here, and there's eight designs. The eight design represents eight auspicious symbols. For example, here is the lotus, along with a beautiful blue banner. Blue banner represents a blue space. A lot of blues in here. There's a conchal, one of the eight auspicious symbols, and endless knots. So there this kind of design in there. And all of this creating by, if, if so, you can show me close up here in my hand. And here is the sand. And this is called a chakbu metal funnel. And by, by the way, this, this is a precious chakbu metal funnel. And uh, this, when I came 1988 to United States for the mandala, and this is given to me by my guru, deeply respect from by his son, Mr. Dalai Lama. This, he had been used this in the past. Since 1988 to today, almost like a half million people touch this, you know? all the schools and the museums, I'll let them try. I'll let them try because this has a that many blessings. Okay. And the Chakbu, we're talking about the mandalas are thousand years. Back then, they don't have a Chakbu. What they used at that time in India, in early Tibet, animal horns. So you can you see it? Right, and then later on in Tibet, create the chakbu. So now my demonstration to you, the yellow sand I'll put into the chakbu, and, and then goes design like this. There you go. Now, so you're going to show a little overview, please. Okay. Hold on now, this way, so young, holding this way, here, and these are the material for stand here. And here is mandala color chart. Okay, now to me. All right, so I think that's uh, make sure that. Uh, so, thank you so much for tonight and organizing this, and uh, each one of you for joining tonight. And I will say thank you and good night. I think that's uh, what else, uh, what else there. Thank you. We are
Mm -hmm. We are very grateful to you. Oh, uh, thank you so much for joining us and uh, explaining the mandalas and uh, answering the questions that people had. I hope that we can do another residency here with NERD when you will be creating yet another mandala so one day people can see in person. Even those from Canada, they can drive down and see how you're creating it. Okay. I'm going, to, I'm going to share the website one more time and a few more things. And, and again, I have to say thank you. It, it, it's been a, truly an honor to work with you on this and, and very grateful. And um, you, again, I put the information in the chat. And if you would like the chat, um, a, a copy of the chat, I can um, send that to each of you. Um, you, here is um, Aveta's information and my information, and if anyone has any ideas for future programming, we will be happy to hear from you. Again, if you would like to know um, or get the chat um, or any other information about this presentation, I'm happy to share with you. Um, just a quick mention of two more things. One is that the Wheaton Arts Glass Pumpkins are available in the online store. We've get, been getting a lot of questions about them. Um, so they are available now. And um, you just simply go to shop.wheatonarts.org to find them. And I'm going to repeat the fact that Alan Wexler and Virgil Marty are on um, not two Thursdays from now, but October 29th at 6 p.m. and you can register for that. And um, if you'd like to say anything in closing, Aveta, um, I am, am done everything. And thank you both very much, Lusang and Soo Kyung. It's been a thank pleasure. You. Thank you, Marcy. Thank you so much for your really uh, putting beautifully together. Thank you. Uh, from both of us. Yes, thank you, Marcy and Iveta, for yes. a beautiful program that you both put together. Right. Good night, all. Good, Good night. night. Good night.